Today I'm down. A dog. A cat. A cat. A cat. A cat. <laughs> okay, I'll have a burger, large fries, and a soda. This is um <laughs> a library. It's called papel potato. That means pierced paper in Spanish. Isn't that neat how the candles came out right there? The mother and shovel rubbers rubbers shove and now by rubber rubber coming to rubbers. Rubbers rubbers gubber dabbers rubbers gubber. Funding for Zoom is provided by the National Science Foundation, America's investment in the future, and by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, a private corporation funded by the American people. The Arthur Binding Davis Foundation. The Weezy Foundation. The Tucker Gosnell Family Foundation. And by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Nice! Well, the Suez Tempo Drum Corps of Springfield. Hey, Zoomers, glad you could join us. Can you guess what I am? <laughs> Give up? I was trying to sound like a leaky faucet. We're about to play this game called Sound Trades, and it was sent to us by Laura E. of Evansville, Indiana. Come along and play. To play, I'm going to need to pick a card with the name of an object or an animal written on it. Then I have to imitate the sound that the animal or object makes. Everyone else has to guess what object or animal I'm making. Okay, okay, okay. Cool. Good. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, I'm going to use this one. Card freezing breaks. Bird? A door? A door? An eagle? <laughs> 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 Something that requires a type of bird? <laughs> a, 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 train, a train whistle. Okay, I'll give you a hint. A whistle? It's in a classroom. And this is this is an action. Nails on a chalkboard. chalkboard. Zoom, you know, chalkboard. Screeching chalkboard. Yeah, yeah he, Mike got it. Nails on a chalkboard. chalkboard. Oh, I hate that. That's really good. That's hard. Right. Mike, it's your turn. You go in the center. All right. Wow, that was really that was good. Really good. I wouldn't have been able to make yeah, that sound. Yeah, I know. that that way we don't do the same thing twice. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Go, go. Go, oh, go, go, go. 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 Go,
that was hard. Well, we can play more. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Win! Win. Yeah. I think that's right. Okay, okay. Yeah. 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 I'm the oh. easiest one to win. Or how I like it. Okay. <laughs> yes. All right, all right. Uh, you have to do it. Wait. California because y'all love to see how they make rap videos and movies. New York, so I can play Major League Baseball. Hawaii, because I want to swim in crystal clear waters. I'd go to Austria because they're really well known for their downhill skiers and I want to go to the Olympics someday. If I could go anywhere in the world, I would go to California to visit my dad. celebrate holidays in different traditions, such as the changing of seasons. People use all different kinds of symbols that are important to them in their papel picado. Now you can see papel picado in the U.S. when people from Mexico gather in their communities. Traditionally, papel picado is made with a chisel and a hammer that cuts through many pieces of paper at one time. But for our papel picado, we're going to use tissue paper and scissors. Besides tissue paper and scissors, you're going to need a glue stick and some string. Now you're ready to choose your colors. In Mexico, different colors represent different holidays, such as different shades of purple for Easter and rainbow colors for Christmas and other things. I think I'm going to celebrate my birthday, so I'm going to use orange and blue since they're my favorite colors. Now. Take the tissue paper and fold it in half once, just like this, so it's nice and even. Match up the corners. Then fold it in half the other way once again. And finally fold it in half the other way once again. Okay. Now, you're going to cut designs in all four sides of the tissue paper. Since I'm going to do my birthday, I think I'll do candles and maybe balloons. You really need to experiment with what you're cutting because you never really know how it's going to turn out until you're finished. I think this will come out to a candle if I do half a candle right here. So I'm going to make half the candle. All right. And then... Maybe I'll try making some balloons here. Cut the little hole in the balloon. If it helps you, you can draw lines before you cut to make it a little bit easier. Okay. Now I'm just gonna make some little triangle designs right here. Okay. And one triangle, and another triangle. 
And then I'm gonna make some wavy sign, a little designs right here. Make little waves. Okay. This is what it looks like before it's opened. And now that I'm ready to open it, this is what it looks like after it's been opened. Isn't that neat how the candles came out right there? Well, uh, papel picado. All right. Once you've done about five or six sheets of paper, you're ready to hang it up. Take a glue stick and glue the top of your piece of paper. I'm going to glue the top just like this. And once you've glued all your pieces, you're going to go to your piece of string and you're going to wrap it around so that it glues to itself and sticks to the string. When you're making your banner, make sure to leave about an inch of room and six inches at the end so that you can tie it up. All right, Zoomers, you ready? Happy birthday, Happy birthday, Happy birthday. of Barnesville, Minnesota, sent to Steve Fanny G. Fanny Dooley likes getting an allowance, but doesn't like money. Why do you think that is? Fanny Dooley likes to borrow, but doesn't like to loan. Why do you think that is? Wallace, but she doesn't like purses. Why do you think that is? Oh, yeah. All right. Make up your own Fanny Dooley and send them to Zoom. book I have ever read. It had no story whatsoever. It had far too many characters. It was just awful. <laughs> so you're the one who took out our phone book. You're about to meet a bunch of kids who dream up a totally new city and compete against kids from all across the country in the Future Cities competition. To win this competition, Emily and her friends have to use engineering to solve some real-life problems in their city, like how to create enough energy. Watch to see if their design has what it takes to be the winner. First place, the Future City competition is... That's me, Emily. I'm my class from Abington, Pennsylvania. This is the big moment. We're about to hear if we won the Super City competition. But before we find out, let me show you how we got there. This is my hometown of Addington, Pennsylvania. I got interested in the Super City competition because my brother was on a Super City team that went to the Nationals in Washington, D.C. It's a tradition at our school, Our Lady Hub of Christians, to participate in the Super City competition. Uh, uh, speaking of traditions and school, I think I'm late. I think it's time we decide where our city is going to be. We're having our first meeting with Mrs. Ring. She's our science and math teacher. We're trying to decide where to build our city, what to call it, and what materials we should use to make it look futuristic. And do you remember some of the reasons why you thought Africa would be a great place to build? They have a lot of, like, economic problems and, like, health problems. We decided to build our city in Africa because it had some energy crisis problems that we could solve. So that brings us from Gabon to the Congo, Zaire, Angola, and Namibia. We decided to pick Namibia in Africa because the climate was so much like California. Like, it's not too hot, yet it's not too cold got some difficulties, but those are going to be interesting difficulties to approach from an engineering viewpoint. We're trying to figure out a name for the city, and we finally decided that Rotombo would be the best name. The Kembe Rotombo is a local basketball player, and he's helped Africa a lot because he lives in the Congo. And Namibia is where the Kembe Rotombo is from, and he's helped build schools and hospitals there. Rotombo was created to solve an energy crisis in Namibia 
which currently has to import half of its electricity. This is a problem we wanted to solve. We're going to the library now, and we're going to search for different types of power sources that we can use in our city. Renewable resources, like the sun, the wind, and the ocean, will always be there. You can always use them and get energy from them. And since the tumble is close to the ocean, we thought this might be a great place to get a lot of energy from. Uh, right now, we're researching that hydroelectricity, finding ways to use like the ocean and water to provide energy for our city. I still like the tidal fences. Yeah. But the thing is, they're both very costly and they be hard to get. In our research, we learned about turbine farms. They use the tides and the waves and the wind even to create energy. There's something like a big fan that we call a turbine. And when the wind blows, the, the turbine turns and it collects energy. So you're getting great. For the contest, we build a computer model of the city. Yellow means industrial and the orange means government space. We do a layout on paper first because if you put it on paper first, you already have it organized. In SimCity 3000, you can create and build your own city. The SimCity program teaches you how to maintain the city. The things that you do to your city affect the consequences that come later. Say, if you don't connect electricity to it, then the people won't build there because there's not electricity. We're going to lay down the roads, and then we're going to put in all the zones according to our map. I think it looks good. Now we've done the research, and we're ready to start building the model itself. Tune in next time, and you'll see how far we've progressed in the building of Matunda. And when it's all done, we'll take our city to be judged at the regional competition in Philadelphia. That's where we'll find out if we'll win and go on to the national finals. We'll continue the story of Emily and her team on another episode of Zoom. How would you power a futuristic city? Send your ideas to Zoom. And for more information about the Future Cities competition, visit the Zoom website. Hi, Junior. What do cows play at parties? I don't know. Moosable chairs. <laughs> Isn't that funny? You know, moo, you know, That's moo. That's utterly ridiculous. <laughs> Here's a letter with a fun name game sent in by Ramel T. of Waukegan, Illinois. Dear Zoom, can you see if you can figure out these face puzzles? Here are the instructions. First, look at the picture. Then, look at the face parts to spell out each name. So, each picture has hidden letters that spell out someone's name. Okay, Alini and Garrett, you ready to play? Yep. Sure. Okay, so you guys have to guess. So, just look at all the different letters and see so what's L L P N Y. There's another letter in there, too. There is? Well, o? There's L L P Y and O. Yeah, the O right here. So, what does it say? So, L L P Y and O. So now we just need to figure out it's a, what it is. I'll give you a hint. It's a girl's name. Polly. Yes. Good job. Polly. Ah. Oh, Polly. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> that, Here's uh, another one. Oh. Uh, okay. So for, it helps if you first, like, look at all the letters and then... A T T I. To say to the mouth. Yeah. H M Y. And... So, O. Oh. Yeah, so, oh, so, okay. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven letters, so... And I'll give you a hint. You want a hint? Sure. Yeah. It's a boy. Okay. Tommy? Tommy. Thomas? No, close. There's no I in Thomas. Oh, yeah, that's true. There's no one in Tommy. Mm, okay. Okay. T-H-O-M. No. Timothy. Good job. Good job. Yeah. See, T -I -M -O T H Y. That's cool. cool. I know, that's really neat. <laughs> Here's another one. S I O N A. Oh, I know. Fiona. Fiona. Good. Yeah. Oh, so good what word would you like? So it's S I O N A. Fiona. I love that name. Yeah, it's a pretty name. Okay. okay. Whoa. That's okay. Really okay. <laughs> E-H-L-L-I-R-A-E. Um. 
Wait a minute. Are I in Wait, no. Seven letters. Charlie? Is it Charlie? Yeah. 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 C -H oh, yeah. oh, yeah. So it's the C-H-A-R-L-I-E. That's cool. Cool. Yeah. Charlie. Charlie. Is that yeah. the last one? Yep, that's it. That was so Those fun. are really neat. They're like Those anagrams awesome. for pictures. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. That'd be cool if we could make up our own, like, about I. I know. Yeah, like, a leaning. Hey, Courtney. Yeah, singing? What happens when you tell a cow something important? I have no idea. It goes in one ear and comes out the other. <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> hmm. <laughs> You've probably had lemonade before, but have you ever had limeade? You make it with limes instead of lemon. Ilana of Wisconsin emailed us the recipe. Here's what you'll do. First, you want to roll a lot. This will help it make more juice. Mm. There we go. Then, cut the lime in half and squeeze it into a bowl. If you're not allowed to use a knife, make sure to ask an adult for help. I'm going to hold the lime and tuck my fingers under so I don't cut myself. I'm just going to let the knife do the work. Now I'm going to squeeze my lime into the bowl. For this recipe, you'll probably have to squeeze about four limes. I've already squeezed three. Ooh. I can smell the lime juice. It smells really good. Ooh. Now, pour your lime juice into a pitcher. One third cup sugar. Love sugar. Sugar is the best. Then four cups of cold water. Go. It looks a lot like lemonade, but we you know it's like. Pour your limeade into a nice glass of ice. And enjoy. Oh, it's really good. It tastes just like mine. members of the Zoom team help solve a problem at their school. We are members of our school safety patrol at AK Shooter in Pensacola, Florida. Every day we saw cars speeding through our school zone. Our crossing guard, Mr. Rooks, decided to use a hair dryer disguised as a radar gun to trick people into slowing down. A local television station did a feature story on him and a secret was out. Nobody was slowing down for the hair dryer anymore. So, we decided to buy him a real radar gun. We used money we had raised at a lemonade stand and collected donations. We presented him with the gun on our morning school news broadcast. The story made national news, and soon Mr. Oaks was getting calls from other crossing guards in other states wanting to get their own radar gun. Hey Caroline! Oh yeah, for me? What do cows like to read? I don't know. Catalogs! You got it? Have a shovel, I'll have a grab 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 a my wife's never love her. Mm. <laughs> I'm a lover. I'm a lover. I think you have you. 
خب بابا تو ابو سبا یا با تو ابو نبو سبا 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 I know what you think. So log on and make your opinion count at the survey section of the Zoom website at pbskids.org or America Online keyword PBS Kids. become the property of Zoom and will be eligible for inclusion in all Zoom media. This means that we can share your ideas with other Zoomers on TV, the web, in print material, and in other media. So, send us to Zoom. Oh, send us a poem, or do you get a scone, or do, or a joke, or a play, and a song, or a dude, and a smile appear on your television someday. is provided by the National Science Foundation America's Investment in the Future and by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting a private corporation funded by the American people the Arthur Vining Davis Foundation the Weezy Foundation the Tucker Gosnell Family Foundation and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you What? <laughs>